www.jeffreylawson.net and I'm going to be looking at how to beat the Scandinavian defense today. So uh, the Scandinavian defense, pretty simple, is D5. You know, E4, D5 here. And black is establishing uh, some immediate pressure against white center, but in the variation, the, the main line I'm going to be looking at with queen takes d5, he's going to be exposing his queen. Now, other tries here, black can also play knight f6, trying to uh, maybe see if white wants to gambit, white, white wants to accept a gambit, and this is going to be really good for black. That's a whole other can of worms. So also with queen takes d5, I'm going to be looking at the queen a5, the kind of main line, uh, what you see more than anything else. But also possible is queen to d6, or even weirder, queen to d8, bringing the queen back in. And this really just gives white a, an extra move or two in development, so I, I don't even really think it, it's you know too much to be worried about. But with queen to a5, black black can spice it up. You know, you, you see some good players playing the... Uh, the Scandinavian defense every now and then. I think Gadakamski, Vizvanath, and Anand, to, to name a, I think, I think Kramnik has even played it a couple times. And what I'm going to recommend here, getting down to business, is go ahead with d4. This is the, the main stuff. Black, more often than not, is going to play directly c6 here because he doesn't want to run into problems with his, his queen, um, you know, getting too stranded out there. And so knight f3. So this is really the, the, main, the main stuff here. And there's two, two or three legit replies. G6 is one, although you don't see that quite as much. Bishop G4 and Knight F6. So Bishop G4 and Knight F6 are the main ideas. So we're going to start real quick with Knight F6. And I'm going to recommend kind of the standard treatment uh, against this kind of Scandinavian defense. is uh, what, what I'm going to recommend is Knight to E5. Just jam the Knight in there real early. And this may seem kind of weird because you're moving the knight twice in the opening without finishing, your, you know, developing your other pieces. But there is a reason to this madness. And so, uh, the, you know, the, I guess the main idea is, first off, you're going to be inhibiting black's development. Because he, now he can't, you know, bring the bishop to g4 and pin the knight. It's going to be a little tougher for him to play knight to d7. And if, if nothing else, you can bring the knight to c4 and harass the black queen, where the knight's going to be very well placed on c4. So, just jam the knight, and, and now, uh, you know, Kasparov played this against Anand in their 1995 World Championship match. Anand answered with something a little bit different. I don't think you'll see too much at the beginner level with bishop to e6. And the game continued something along these lines. So, Anand actually equalized out of the opening. I think Kasparov won the game uh, in, in an end game later. So, just moving forward here, after knight to e5, a bishop to f5. Now we can see something like the G4. And this is really what I'm trying to preach, you know, for white to play against the Scandinavian, is that if black wants to take his queen out and, and spend a couple moves on the queen in the opening and, and try to do all this fancy stuff, as white, I, I feel like you should be obligated to punish that immediately in the opening with rapid development and just a very aggressive mentality. So directly with g4, and now if uh, bishop g6, you can play bishop to c4 here, but I think it's much better. Go ahead with bishop to g2, where the bishop, first of all, is going to be pointing you know, on a very nice diagonal, inhibiting c5 and, and further counterplaying the center for black. And also, black has got problems here. You know, I mean, it, it, it's not like he's, he's toast in the water yet, but, you know, if black isn't really careful with this line... He's going to be running into some serious stuff. I mean, if e6, let's just say castles, bishop d6, and f4, I think it's uh, pretty easy to see that black is in some serious problem here. You know, he, black is in trouble. So just this, this idea with the immediate g4 just jamming that down black's throat is, is just killer. You know, and, and there's also other ways to play this. You can go straight with h4, for example, and really just try to knock black out before the game even starts almost. So that's uh, just, just kind of a preview of, of what I'd like to, to recommend in those lines. Um, also possible, let's say, uh, you know, if you, if you feel like playing a calmer line, you, you know, or black, let's say black plays knight bd7. He wants to trade the knight off. Maybe knight c4, kick this queen, and now you can even play g3. And continue trying to gain tempo and, and time for development while chasing the black queen around. So now you're thinking bishop to f4, 
Bishop to G2. And uh, I, I think it's pretty easy to see that, that White is going to have a very comfortable game. So now moving on, that was what to recommend against Knight F6, just immediate Knight E5, and try to think of ideas like G4, maybe Knight to C4 afterward, just chasing the Black Queen around and, and trying to gain time doing it. So moving on here, I, I've got a little game prepared by uh, the famous Grandmaster Ilya Smirin, and he's going to be playing Bolat Asamov in Beijing. 1991. And so moving forward, Smirin's got the white pieces. You know, he's playing against the Scandinavian, knight c3, cd4, knight f6. Slightly different line here with the, the instant bishop g4. So black neglects to play uh, c6 right away. So Smirin, he plays h3, and this is a really cool line. So if h3, we're going to look at what happens if bishop takes knight in the next game here. But for the moment, Smirin just goes ahead with g4. And so this might look kind of similar to what I was recommending in the last game, except that black has not played c6 yet. So with the knight on e5 directly, very aggressive setup, kicking black back, and I'm really trying to punish him here. So e6, bishop g2, so this is a fantastic diagonal. It's very tough for black to achieve counterplay in the center if he's not able to play e5. Or c5. And it's pretty tough to play c5 when this monster bishop is just lined up on the diagonal. So moving forward, Smirin goes with h4. And I like this a lot because, you know, now it's like, what is black going to do? He, he's, there are some questions that need to be answered. And, you know, principally, what is he going to do with this bishop? You know, I mean, this is not, not an easy task. So, you know, if something like h5, for example, we could see g5. Maybe knight here, and just taking this bishop, black is just toast. In this end game, these pawns, probably he's going to be down like eight pawns in the end game. So that's kind of the, the problem he's facing after h4 is that what is he going to do with this bishop? So in the game, black played knight d7, and this was his best solution he could find. So now after takes, you know, if knight takes d7, h5, and the bishop is completely lost. So in the game, he played king takes d7. Now bishop d2, just very calm. You'll see this a lot of times in, in the Scandinavian as white will be trying to, you know, you, you got to be careful where you put the bishop because let's say you go bishop to f4 with a knight d5 and maybe black is going to be achieving a comfortable equality. Something like that. You know, that's kind of the idea. Maybe maybe h5 as well, but the bishop could be exposed on f4. So you see it a lot more that bishop d2 is almost like, it's kind of like a sneaky move because you're gaining time while threatening the black queen. So in the game, black neglected to protect his queen and going ahead here uh, with h5. And so now g5, white obviously doesn't want to take that pawn. It, it just wouldn't make any sense. So now g5, just gaining time on Black's knight, and Black took the knight all the way back. You know, knight to d5 would just lose a piece due to the discovered attack on his queen. So after knight to g8, now d5 by Smirin. And, and this is exactly right. I mean, looking at this position, white is going to have to break through, and he's going to have to do it in a hurry. Otherwise, Black might be able to talk his way out of this, this you know, <laughs> this disaster of an opening with uh, not not too big of a disadvantage. So for white, you know, when you see that king is just stuck in the center there, you got to go after it right away. Because if you don't, you know, it's going to get away. So he tries d5, just makes so much sense. And after takes, knight takes, now we got all kinds of tactics, some x-rays against the black king, all this kind of nasty stuff. And uh, okay, so black gets a check, bringing the knight back. Now queen to a4. Black is just in a, in a world of pain here. Really, because, you know, he's got so many different white threats to worry about. Let's just say queen to c7. Bishop h3. Now check. Or, or now now bishop a5 check. And the black queen is going to be lost. And actually, I think uh, black is going to get mated after queen takes d6. So that's not going to be too fun for, for black there. So just going back to the game. Instead... In this position, after rook e8 check, knight e3, now queen a4. So black is struggling for activity. Now queen to f4, he's got a nice spot, but 
The problem is that queen might be a little bit exposed when that knight moves. So now king back, a couple of checks, knight d5, and uh, it seems like the game is effectively over here because black just, there's no way for him to push back white's attack. So he tries to go back and sack some material. Now knight f6 by Smirin, and that's not too fun to see those kind of moves. White is just opening up for the mate. After check, in this position, black resigned because he, he's just down too much material. I mean, white could even just trade queens if he, you know, doesn't, if he wants to win in the end game, it, it should be pretty easy. So moving on. So in this position, or <laughs> in this game here, this is Judith Polgard playing CD Needleman. And uh, again, you know, just opening up here, same, similar stuff, you know, Scandinavian, D4, Knight F6, Knight F3, and now Bishop to G4. So again, neglecting to play C6. And uh, usually not that much of a difference in these lines if black doesn't play C6 right away, because usually he's going to do it later, it's going to transpose. So in the game, Polgar plays h3, and what happens if black takes the takes a knight on f3? So here, c6, you know, transposition, and now bishop d2. And this was really cool how Polgar played this game, because she just goes straight for the king. You know, she starts off by trying to... Bishop d2 is like sneaky, because she's trying to force the black queen back. So e6, now castles queenside immediately. And that rapid development with bishop d2 and castle and queen side, white is going to start amassing some pretty nasty threats in the center. So, you know, just to give you an idea, I guess if uh, bishop here maybe, you know, there's all kinds of stuff white is planning with, with knight to e4, knight e5, g4, all that kind of stuff. So in the game, black just goes back. Okay, queen c7, uh, don't, you don't want to get too wrapped up in all these complications. So now g4... And now h4. So very instructive how Polgar is playing. She just gets her queen out of the way, or her king, you know, safe. And castling queenside is going to also open up, you know, a, a little attack in the center with ideas like d5 and the, the e-file now. And you can just see that black has messed around with this queen too much. Coming to d5, going to a5, back to c7. And on the other hand, white hasn't moved one piece, you know, twice at all. So with, with h4, just really, you know, full steam ahead. Now bishop to h3 kind of reminds me of some ideas uh, in, in some complicated lines in the Sicilian where white, where, where white is trying to undermine um, black on this e6 square kind of indirectly with g5 and then g6. So bishop h3, that's the idea. Knight b6, just way too slow. But, uh, I mean, what else are you going to do? If castles... G5, white comes in, picks off F7, and probably E6 as well. So instead, knight B6, G5, and black is just completely busted. And, and that's just how fast it can happen when you play so aggressively in the opening, and, and if you just really try to go for it from the very first move. So now with G6, completely undermined, rookie one, trying to keep the, uh, keep the tactics flowing. You know, and just to point out, Let's say, I don't know, takes, 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 and maybe maybe check. This is just one example of the tactics that are available in this position where white is just threatening to, you know, white's going to win that rook in a lot of material. So just an example of the tactics. So white is just all this pressure on the white squares in the center, and with queen takes f5, and Polgar is pretty much just winning out of the opening here. Uh, bishop g5. She does a good job of wrapping the game up. After queen e5 check, black resigned because he's going to lose his queen. King c8, rook takes c8 check. Picking up that queen. And uh, pretty much the same thing of king d8, rook d6, and just going to lose a queen as well. So what, 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 what happened here today? You know, the Scandinavian defense. I mean, I, I think to me the key, you know, there's no guaranteed beating it in 10 moves, but the key is going to be to play very actively and as aggressively as possible. And the easiest way, the, the most straightforward way that I know to do that is jam the knight in, an early knight e5, and that's really going to inhibit black's development. And if he gets that bishop out early, don't be scared to play for keeps and, and go right ahead with g4 and knight e5. 
just just bring the bring the pain to Black's doorstep. So this is Will Stewart from OnlineChessLessons.net, and thanks for tuning in. Thank you.